Hello, welcome to GVTV. My name is Joey Botram, and I'm joined today with the Grandview women's soccer coach, Vensi Stromanoff. Hi, Vensi. How are you today? I'm all right. How are you doing? I'm doing just well. You're, you were a great player growing up, so the first question I'm going to ask you is about your playing days. Uh, you were a member of the Bulgarian junior national team. Um, this is, is an amazing achievement, and I want to know what it was like to play at such a high competitive level of soccer. Well, uh, it was uh, quite an exciting time in my life. Uh, I wasn't a member for a very long time. I was uh, primarily playing on a national pool, had a few international friendlies. Uh, but it was something that I would cherish and uh, something that really have uh, given me the opportunity to uh, experience the game on a different level and play against uh, some players that uh, later on in their career turned out to be uh, international stars and I cherish those moments being on the field uh, against some of them or on the field with some of them. Yeah, you also played um, six years here with the Des Moines Menace in town and um, in two of those years you guys made a Final Four appearance. Uh, tell me a little bit about that and what it was like to uh, make it that far in the postseason. Well, it was a great achievement. First of all, the Des Moines Menace was uh, uh, brought uh, here to Central Iowa at a time when not too many people believe that there is a opportunity for great soccer, uh, especially in Iowa. And uh, credit goes to our main soccer coach, Blair Reed, for starting the Des Moines Menace and uh, turning it into a very successful program very quickly. Uh, our first appearance in the National uh, Final Four uh, took place in the second year of the Des Moines Menace. At that time, there was no Major League Soccer. Uh, there were two uh, separate divisions, one prof for professionals and one for amateurs, and uh, we made the Final Four in Amateur Division after playing consistently throughout the year against professional teams, and um, went to the Final Four to find out that a lot of the players that we faced there the following year were drafted for the Major League Soccer. So being there so quickly um, and uh, showing to the United States uh, soccer fans that there is a great soccer played here in Central Iowa, especially with a lot of the players coming from uh, the local schools like Grandview and Drake, uh, was a tremendous achievement and um, we really enjoyed that. Our second appearance uh, was uh, a few years later and uh, we really had a shot, I believe, that year at the national title. Uh, we were unlucky with uh, a few players that had to return to their respective collegiate preseason camps before uh, our final four took place and um, uh, diminished a little bit the depth that we have on the squad. But nevertheless, uh, we performed very well, losing only by one goal to the eventual national champion and uh, was again another uh, experience I will cherish for the rest of my life. What positions did you play throughout your soccer career? and? Um do you have a quick story you want to tell us about your glory days playing soccer? Um, I pretty much played almost every position with the exception of a goalkeeper. Uh, being 5'5 five five probably was one of the things that uh, uh, I had going against me when it came down to the goalkeeper's position. But I've played uh, uh, pretty much all defensive positions. I've uh, played as a forward uh, part of my career and I have uh, played as a midfielder uh, for part, part of my career. So I really have been uh, i uh, lucky to have the opportunity to experience uh, all different positions and I think uh, that's something that later on has helped me with uh, my coaching experience. Um, a quick story, I, there's so many, I really don't know that, that there is one particular one, but I would say that one that impacted me the most uh, was uh, in my eighth grade music teacher back in Bulgaria at the time when uh, uh, women were not playing soccer, that was in the beginning of uh, uh, the 80s there, there was no soccer for women at all, um, challenged me to a juggling competition, uh, which I thought I'm going to win easy. Uh, it turned out that uh, it wasn't so easy. She beat me, embarrassed me in front of my whole school, um, and it's a big school, uh, kindergarten to 12th grade, and really uh, put me in a position where I, I understood that it's very important for me to develop my uh, technical ability even more than I had it, and I spent a lot of time juggling and uh, I credit her with uh, being a coach for me to some extent and helping me to uh, uh, helping me to develop my technical experience and start building as you, as you sometimes may uh, understand start, start building that appreciation that uh, uh, women are great athletes as well and you have to respect what they have to offer and I think that was another thing that helped me later on in my coaching career. 
if you ask any guy or girl on either soccer team here, they're going to say that you have amazing soccer skills. And what I want to know is how you took those soccer skills as a player and transformed them into being such a great coach. Well, I think the jury's still out whether or not I'm a great coach. I think uh, <laughs> we'll find out that uh, in the in future. I have had my fair share of success uh, both at Grandview and on a club level. Uh, but I think uh, I'm still too young to, uh, to be in a position to be a great coach. I think I still have way too much to learn uh, in the process of becoming a, a great coach. Uh, I have a great mentor in Blair Reed, our men's soccer coach, uh, and I really appreciate everything that I have been able to learn from him over the years. And um, I think it takes time, um, you know, having having good skills or understanding the game well it's not everything you need in order to become a good coach. Having to understand how to work with young people in order to be able to pass that knowledge to them is very important and, and that's one area where I'm still learning. Um, in one of your first coaching positions you coached the Iowa United uh, Soccer Club and you coached them to a great record of 50 wins, four losses and two ties. So that right there tells you you're a great coach. Those are very Bill Belichick like numbers. So what I want to know is how you kept that team focused to not look games ahead and just focus on the task at hand to keep such an amazing record. We had a, uh, a very successful uh, and very motivated, very competitive group of young ladies that really wanted to uh, achieve something that uh, no other women's team from Iowa has achieved. Uh, their goal was to advance um, to the regional finals. Uh, we came up short on that goal, but in the process of uh, getting there, we were able to play numerous teams. One of the most memorable victories was against the uh, defending national champion, uh, Colorado Rush Nike, um, which we defeated 3-0 at uh, the WAX uh, tournament in Washington, D.C., which was at the time one of the, the really good tournaments. But I think keeping them focused was not only my responsibility. I was a co-coach with uh, Kim Walker, which is uh, um, uh, uh, someone that has really helped me to understand more the mentality of uh, young female athletes, especially here in the States. That was one thing that I didn't have sufficient knowledge of when I started getting into coaching here. And I think without that experience and being able to work with him and the other great coaches at Ivy United, I probably would not be here today because there is a learning curve of understanding the culture understanding how uh, the female athlete think compared to uh, myself as a male athlete. So I think those were very, very important things for me. Yep, you are here today and 10 years ago you started this program from scratch. Tell me what gave you the desire to want to start a program here at Grandview College. Um, the experience at Ivy United uh, was definitely one of the uh, forces behind uh, that desire to uh, get involved in coaching. The other one was I um, went through a coaching school in Bulgaria. I did not graduate, but I was able to complete enough of the program there. I transferred here to Grayson College, so that's the reason I didn't graduate back there. Uh, but it was a coaching school, and um, I really wanted to get into coaching. Um, when I transferred uh, here to the States, my desire was to uh, get a degree in business, and I was almost on the road of becoming a stockbroker. I um, received a phone call from Blair Reed, um, here and um, he shared with me that uh, Grandview is looking to start a women's program and uh, he thought that I would be a good fit for the program. Interviewed for the job, I was excited and I gave up $85,000 uh, initial salary as a stockbroker to become a, a soccer coach at Grandview and don't have any regrets about it. Speaking of Graceland, uh, you play Graceland every year. Does, does that give you a little extra incentive uh, to be your alma mater or is it just another game to you? Um, there is always extra incentive. Um, I, I have uh, very fond feelings uh, of my experience at uh, experience at uh, at Graceland. It has been a uh, great experience and has been a great competition over the years. Uh, last year we finally had a chance after a few ties and a few losses to uh, defeat Graceland uh, when they were ranked number 15th in the nation. Uh, I do know that, that they took that game to heart and. Um, it was marked on their calendar when they played us this year. So it has been a great rivalry, I think, with a lot of respect between the two programs. And uh, I truly enjoy it. But yes, every single time we play, it is extra special for me. And I want to make sure that uh, win, loss, or a tie, that our team performs up to the standard. And the uh, majority of our Graceland games have been memorable games. 
I was lucky enough to attend your game this year against Western Illinois, a Division I school that you guys had on the schedule, and you played them real tough. It was one-to-one, -one and you ended up giving up a goal in the last minute. had to be a tough loss, but you played well, and I just want to know what was your game plan going into that game, and how well did you uh, execute the game plan? Well, the game plan was uh, to try to minimize the advantages of an athletic ability specifically that a Division I team may have over us. Um, what it is speed, what it is size, and uh, our game plan was to make sure that we uh, do not allow them to penetrate the space behind our defensive line and uh, making sure that our team does not stretch um, the full size of the field in order to allow them to penetrate that space. Uh, so the girls were um, uh, you know, briefed on that specific tactic that we're going to use. Uh, we uh, went through the training session the day before, uh, uh, working specifically on how we're going to get it executed. And to be honest with you, we did a very good job, um, according not only to my own assessment, but the assessment of number of coaches that were in the audience. And um, speaking with the Western Illinois coach after the game, um, he he said that our game plan was uh, very successful. They were not able to penetrate the space the way they would normally like to. And if it wasn't for a lucky bounce in the last minute of the game, uh, we could have got the game into overtime. And as you know very well, overtime is uh, part of the game when anything is possible. So I was very pleased with the team in the way they executed the game plan. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today on GVTV. I wish we had more time to talk because I know you could talk for 20 Absolutely. minutes if they give you the time. But um, thanks a lot. And I want to wish you and the girls team the best of luck for the rest of the year and go get them, coach. Thank you very much, I appreciate it.